everyone, welcome back to my channel for a brand new mystery with Molly and in today's video we're going to be talking about the case of Holly Gazard. And this case was actually a request from one of you guys, one of my subscribers, so a huge thank you to Megan for requesting this case. If you don't know already, I've mentioned it in a few of my recent videos, but if you don't know, I now have a request a case form. So basically, if there's a case that you would like me to cover, you can go to the link in the description and request a case. I get a lot of case requests in the comments of my videos, so if you request a case or suggest a case through the form, it does make it that little bit easier for me because it means that all of my requests are in one place and to be honest that way I'm a bit more likely to cover it because I check my case request form every single day so I am more likely to see it and remember the case if it's done through the form because like I said I'm checking it constantly to work out which case to do next. If you do request a case I can link your social media in the description of my video obviously if you want to be. Um, you don't have to be but that's just a little kind of thank you for requesting the case. Before I get into the video I just want to clarify that my intent with these videos is never to offend or upset anyone that may have been involved with the case. All of the information I found on this video has been from several different sources on the internet such as articles and documentaries and stuff like that so I do apologise if anything is incorrect or if you think that I've missed something out that is really important to the case as always please feel free to let me know in the comments and having said all of that let's just get into today's case. So Holly Gazard was a 20 year old girl born on the 24th of July 1993 to her parents Nick and Amanda Gazard and Holly also had an older sister called Chloe. Chloe was only a few years older than Holly and so growing up the girls were always very close. They always had a really lovely sisterly bond. It was fun growing up with Holly. Um, she had so much energy and um, she was always very playful and um, just always on the go. You couldn't keep up with her. She was she darted here, there and everywhere. Holly was described as a very fun, bright, vivacious and talented individual. She was just always very determined to do well and she was just loved so much by her friends and family. Growing up, Holly would just absolutely love participating in various different sports such as football, gymnastics, athletics, jiu-jitsu, horse riding, just pretty much any sport, you name it, and Holly would give it a go. And Holly, alongside her father Nick, was also an avid man Manchester United fan. Holly was also nicknamed Ginge by her friends because of her bright red ginger hair. And although Holly was always very sporty growing up, as she entered her teenage years, her kind of girly side started to show a bit more and she became really interested in like the beauty and fashion and hair industry. And as her passion for the beauty industry and the hair industry grew, Holly decided that she wanted to be a hairdresser. So when Holly left school at 16 years old, that's exactly what she did. She went and got an apprenticeship in a hair salon called Reflections in 2010. Although Holly really enjoyed the hairdressing side of this job, it was always one of her kind of dreams and aspirations to be able to travel on her own. And when Holly spoke to her father, Nick, about this, he suggested maybe kind of combining the two, maybe combining her love for hairdressing and her love for traveling and going to work as a hairdresser on a cruise ship. And so in 2012, Holly gained a place at Steiner Academy, which I believe is like a college specifically for hair and beauty training. And it was here where Holly planned to train for a little while in hairdressing before eventually going to work on the cruise ships. However, her training with Steiner Academy didn't actually start until March of 2013. And so Holly Holly decided to accept a job working in a zest bar just for some extra cash. And it was while she was working at this zest bar that Holly meets 20 year old Asher Maslin, a security guard who also worked at the bar and would soon become Holly's boyfriend. When they first met, Holly and Asher got on really well and like I said, they soon began a relationship. They kept their relationship kind of quiet for a little while, however, after a few weeks, Holly asked her parents, Nick and Amanda, if she could invite a friend around for dinner, her friend being Asha. And her parents were absolutely fine with this. They were looking forward to meeting Holly's new boyfriend. However, when Holly walked through the door with Asha, her mother, Amanda, turned to her husband, Nick, and said, Oh no, not him. You see, Amanda actually knew Asha Maslin. He used to attend the local school where Amanda worked and Amanda remembered him in school as being very loud, very mouthy, very rebellious, just in general a bit of a troublemaker in school and so 
they were a bit wary of him at first. I, I didn't know Asher before Holly started the relationship. Um, so the first time I met him was when she brought him home one day and she said, could, could she bring a friend home? We said, yes, that's not a problem. But when he came in, my wife said, oh, it's him. Uh, she knew him from school days where she worked. So um, I didn't know Asher, but, but Mandy did. She just said to, to me that at school he was a little bit rebellious, a little bit mouthy, a bit gobby. Um, and she told him at the start, um, which was very brave because Manny doesn't usually say those type of things. Despite this though, Holly seemed really happy with Asher and so her parents just decided to give him the benefit of the doubt. And at first it really seemed like Asher had changed from when he was at school. He was really respectful towards the family at the start. He was getting on well with them and he was just welcomed into their home. However, soon Holly's family began noticing some kind of controlling behaviours on Asher's part. Holly's family began noticing that Asher and Holly were arguing a lot and Holly would always get loads of text messages and loads of calls from Asher constantly. He was just always trying to contact her. And I suppose the kind of constant texting and constant calling thing is matter of personal opinion. I suppose you guys can decide whether you think that is a little bit controlling and obsessive. But it was just kind of little things like that that the family were noticing about Asher Maslin that they just thought was a little bit odd. I heard them arguing on the phone um, quite a few times, but generally most most couples do but it got a bit more frequent and um she'd kind of she'd have so many missed calls on her phone and it would be a constant texting which i didn't think was quite quite normal holly later moved from her home in gloucester to watford for her training with steiner academy and she soon got her dream job she secured a place hairdressing on a cruise ship to the bahamas for after she had completed her training and holly was really excited for this like i said earlier she was very ambitious and adventurous and she wanted to travel and so her family were just thrilled for her but as well as being really happy for Holly, her parents were also kind of relieved because they assumed that because Holly was now going to Watford to train and then eventually go on the cruise ship, that this meant her relationship with Asher would come to an end. However, about a week and a half after Holly had moved to Watford, her family found out that Asher Maslin had actually followed her up there without her knowledge and was staying in a hostel. Um, Holly went off to, to Watford to, to train with Steiner. And then about a week later, we found out that Ashen had followed her up there and he was staying in a hostel or, or some, some place like that, um, which we weren't too happy about, but obviously there's nothing we could have done about it. And after a week of starting her training at Steiner Academy, Holly actually phoned her parents and said that she wanted to come home. Holly never gave a specific reason as to why she wanted to come home and so her parents were really confused. This was Holly's dream and so they found it really odd that she suddenly just wanted to come back. And so initially they just thought that maybe she was just a little bit homesick. But after a while it seemed like Holly was getting on a lot better in London. She had gotten a job in a salon up there while she was doing her training and her relationship with Asha Maslin continued. Then three months into their relationship in May of 2013, it was actually Holly's mother Amanda's birthday and so Holly and Asher were invited back down to Gloucester for her birthday meal. However, Asher Maslin turned up an hour late to this birthday meal and not only that, he was drunk when he arrived. Whilst he was in the restaurant, Asher became very abusive towards the restaurant staff. He would shout at them, be rude to them, snap his fingers at them. And then he also began being very abusive towards Holly and her family as well. In the end, Asher Maslin actually had to be taken out of the restaurant by Holly's sister's partner because he was being really abusive, like I said, and at this point it was really embarrassing for Holly. When it was Manda's birthday and we invited him, we all six of us went out for a meal and he turned up an hour late, he was drunk, he was abusive and disrespectful in the, in the restaurant to Mandy, to me, to Holly in particular, but also to the other staff in the restaurant. So Chloe's partner had to take him outside uh, and tell him not to be disrespectful. I was disgusted by it. I, would, I don't see how you can turn up to anyone, any other family or any friends or in that sort of state. 
And so now Holly's family were even more worried about her relationship with Asher because it literally seemed like he hadn't changed at all. But unfortunately, despite this incident in the restaurant, it didn't prompt Holly to break up with Asher and she just moved back up to London with him. Holly eventually finished her training with Steiner Academy and she began her work on the cruise ship. However, after just a few weeks on the cruise ship, Holly actually decided to quit and leave and it's her family's belief that Asher Maslin actually persuaded her to leave and stay in London with him. Despite the fact that working on a cruise ship was Holly's dream, she still left and she got a job in a hair salon in Watford. Although Holly's family lived in Gloucester and she lived in London, Holly still saw her family as often as she could and on one occasion her family actually came up to London to go out for lunch with Holly. However, her sister Chloe noticed that the whole time Holly was just getting loads of texts from her boyfriend, Asher Maslin, and loads of calls, and he was just constantly trying to contact her while she was out with her family. The text messages from Asher to Holly said things along the lines of, don't let your family persuade you to go home, and also, you have to stay here with me. There was a, uh, another instance where we went to visit Holly in London, and she came out with us for the day for lunch, and um, whilst Holly was getting a drink from the bar, her phone was going off and off and off. You see the messages on the front. And one of the messages was, don't, don't let them take you back. Don't let them try and persuade to take you back. You need to stay here with me. You see, Asher Maslin felt threatened by Holly's family. He wanted to be in complete control of her life. And he felt as though her family were getting in the way of that. In his eyes, it was like both of them can't have Holly. Holly belonged to him now. In August of 2013, six months into their relationship, the couple are still living together in London and they decided to go to Notting Hill Carnival together. Whilst they were at this carnival, Holly actually left Asher momentarily because I believe one of Asher's cousins wanted to go to the toilet and he didn't know where it was so Holly offered to go with him. But it then took a while for Holly to find Asher again because it's a carnival, it's busy, there's loads of people and so it understandably took a while for them to locate each other again. However, when they eventually did find each other again, Asher Maslin was furious with Holly for having left him so long. For some reason, he was just absolutely enraged with anger towards Holly and he then became violent and pushed Holly to the floor. At the carnival, Holly told me that she'd taken one of Asher's cousins to um, the toilet. He didn't want to go on his own. Um, and he couldn't find, Asher couldn't find Holly, so he was panicking and he was, Asha was ringing her and texting her and when she got back, obviously it's a quite busy place, it takes a while to, to go there, he was just fuming and enraged with anger. So after this, after the carnival, Holly was obviously really upset and she phoned her parents and asked her to come and pick her up from London. She phoned me and said, Dad, could you come and pick me up because I want to come home, so... I dropped everything from work and just went straight to London to pick her up. Another incident where Asher Maslin was violent towards Holly was actually caught on CCTV six months before her death. I believe during this incident that Holly and Asher were out in town one night and for some reason Asher became violent towards Holly again and this time he actually put his hands around her throat. And like I said, this was captured on CCTV and Asher Maslin was arrested, however, Holly didn't press charges. But this time that he was arrested for putting his hands around Holly's throat wasn't actually the first time that Asher Maslin had been involved with the law. He had actually been arrested several times before this incident for multiple different reasons, including assault, violence, criminal damage, theft, and possession of class A drugs. But anyway, back to where we were in the case. So Holly had just moved back home with her family in Gloucester. However, despite this and despite the incident at the carnival, Holly decided to give Asher Maslin another chance and so their relationship continued. But Holly's sister Chloe was not happy at all about the fact that Holly had gotten back together with Asher. Understandably, this boy had been violent towards Holly on several different occasions and she had gotten back together with him. And because of this, because of the fact that Chloe really disagreed with the fact that Holly got back together with Asher, the sisters actually fell out for a little while. When... Asher and Holly came back from London, back to Gloucester. Um, because of what had happened, I didn't really want anything much to do with Asher. Um, and actually, me and Holly fell out 
for a little bit over that. She was quite adamant that she wanted to give Asher another another chance and I wasn't very happy about that. After moving back home to Gloucester, Holly soon got another job in September of 2013 in a hair salon called Fringe Benefits and LaBelle Hair and Beauty. And Holly really enjoyed this job at the salon. She got on so well with her colleagues and her customers and she just made great friends working there. Holly seemed really happy. However, as each day passed, her boyfriend Asha Maslin would become increasingly disrespectful and abusive towards her. He would constantly turn up drunk at Holly's house. He would follow her if she went out with friends. She wasn't even allowed to go and spend time with her friends on her own. He always had to turn up and when he would, he would be abusive towards her friends. Holly used to tell us quite often if she went out with her friends at night, he would suddenly turn up at the end, uh, sometimes being a little bit abusive to other people, sometimes drunk, um, but always turning up where she was. So she couldn't really go out on her own with her friends without him being there at some stage. And there were a number of times when I talked to Holly about the relationship and said, look, if you want me to get involved with the relationship, if you want me to talk to him, tell him, let me know. But she said, no, Dad, I will handle it. I'll do it my way. Um, I'll, I'll try and do it amicably. So I'll let you know when I need your help. Eventually, Holly just had enough. She was sick of the fact that Asher would constantly try to control every single aspect of her life. And so she finally decided to end the relationship. So Holly rang Asha and said that she didn't want to be with him anymore, but Asha wasn't going to let that happen. And so he decided to emotionally blackmail Holly and tell her that if she broke up with him, he would kill himself. And that terrified Holly, even though she didn't want to be with Asher anymore, she still cared about him and she obviously didn't want him to kill himself. So she was kind of forced to stay in contact with Asher. Although they weren't a couple anymore, Asher would still harass Holly. He would still constantly text and ring her. He would just not leave her alone. At this point, Holly just wanted to move on with her life, but Asher was preventing her from doing that. And so on Valentine's Day, on the 14th of February, 2014, Holly agreed to meet Asha at a local pub to kind of discuss things. And whilst they were at this pub, Asha was trying to convince Holly to give him another chance and get back with him. But like I said, Holly had had enough at this point. She didn't want to be with him anymore. And so she said no, and she was trying to get through to him. But as usual, because Asha couldn't get his own way, he became angry and he actually threw a glass of water in Holly's face in this pub in front of everyone. Then when Holly tried to leave the pub and get into her car, Asha actually got into the passenger side of her car and asked her if he could use her phone to call someone to come and pick him up. But instead, Asha actually reached over and stole Holly's bank card before running off and emptying her bank account. Then he followed her back to the car, got into the car. Um, he said, can I use your phone to, to make a call, someone to pick me up? She said, yes. At that stage, he stole a bank card and he went and emptied her bank, bank account. The following day, Holly told her family what had happened the night before and the family decided to contact the police about Asha Maslin. Whilst Holly and her family were talking to the police about Asha's behaviour, Holly actually began telling police about some things that Holly's family weren't even aware of. For example, they found out that Asha would threaten Holly and her family and Holly never told anyone because she didn't want her family to worry and so she just kept it to herself up until this point. The police came round on Saturday night and Mandy, myself and Holly, we sat in the room with them and she told them all about it and there were a number of things which she said there and then which we were not aware of, you know, particularly around some of the abuse that she'd been getting from him. When the police were here, he was sending some text messages and the police will be, able, will be able to witness what was said and threats on my dad, threats on us as a family and threats on the house. After Holly had told police about Asha's behaviour, the police told Holly that after she had signed her statement about Asha Maslin, the case would go to court and so Holly was very reluctant to sign it at first. Because she didn't want to go to court, she didn't want to face Asha in court and so she decided to take some time to think about it. Eventually though, Holly did sign the statement and so police began their inquiry into Asha Maslin. And at this point, Holly and her family were just relieved. They finally felt like all of this was over and Holly could finally move on with her life. But Asha found out that Holly had reported him to the police and he was furious it was at this point that he realised that Holly was serious about the relationship being over and he obviously wasn't happy about that and he decided he was going to 
get his revenge and take back the control. On Tuesday the 18th of February 2014, four days after Holly broke things off once and for all with Asha Maslin, Holly actually went into town that morning to get her nails done. Since splitting up, Holly had received a few text messages from Asha Maslin here and there, all of which she ignored. One of these texts from Asha to Holly said, I don't want to get fucking violent or I'll take it too far. But everyone around her said that Holly seemed fine. She was unfazed by the messages and she was finally getting her life back on track. After getting her nails done, Holly started work at the hair salon just after lunch. While she was at work, her colleagues asked Holly if she was feeling nervous or anxious about the whole situation with Asha Maslin, but she said no, she was feeling good. Every single person who worked that day had asked Holly if she was worried or if she was frightened. Um, and Holly being the ballsy little firecracker that she was, if she was frightened, she never let on. But later that same day at around a quarter to six, Holly's ex-boyfriend Asha Maslin actually came into the salon where Holly was still working. At this point, I believe there was around one or two clients in the salon and four or five members of staff, including Holly. And when Asha came into the salon, he walked straight up to Holly and punched her in the face. And it was at this point that one of the clients thought that they saw Asha Maslin holding a knife. The clients were here that evening had said that Holly had been attacked and one of the clients had said that they thought they had seen a knife. Immediately the manager of the hair salon ran straight out the back and phoned the police. However, this didn't stop Asha Maslin from getting out his knife and stabbing Holly. Like I said, Asha got out a knife and began stabbing Holly and colleagues and clients were all trying to help her, but Asha began threatening them with the knife as well. Asha Maslin stabbed his ex-girlfriend Holly 14 times before fleeing the scene and taking the knife with him. As soon as Asha left the salon, her colleagues all tried to help Holly as she just kind of led on the floor in the salon in a pool of her own blood. When paramedics arrived she was rushed straight to hospital where doctors made desperate attempts to save her but sadly it was too late and at 6 51 p.m holly gazard was pronounced dead after suffering a major blood loss so police officers arrived at the gazard family home and were met by nick holly's father and it was then when police told nick that his youngest daughter holly had been killed at the time nick was told that holly was killed he was actually on his own because he was about to go and leave to meet his wife amanda and his other daughter Chloe. And just as I was leaving the house, um, two policemen um, came down the drive, asked if I was Nick Gazard. I said yes. He said, would you mind coming inside? Uh, they said, I've got some, some bad news for you. It's your daughter Holly Gazard. I said yes. She said, I'm very sorry, but um, there's been an altercation and she's been she's been killed. So now Nick was faced with the horrible task of having to tell Holly's mother and sister that she had been murdered. It was just devastating, absolutely devastating. The thought that was going through my mind was, how am I going to tell uh, Mandy and Chloe that Holly had been killed? Uh, that was the only thought that was going through my mind. Um, something that a father should never have to do. I thought he'd been a while. I was a bit concerned and he came back through the door and he was he was completely white and he tried to usher me into the living room where my daughter was and my mum. And um, he looked at my mum and said, I've um, got some really bad news. Holly's been stabbed and she's died. And my mum kind of fell into the sofa and was crying and I just felt completely numb as if it hadn't have happened. Meanwhile, forensic teams were sent straight to the salon where Holly was murdered in order to collect as much forensic evidence that there might have been at the scene. Obviously for police, this was quite a straightforward investigation. They knew straight away who murdered Holly because of witnesses in the salon. And so at this point, all they needed to do was find him because he was on the run, like I said earlier. Police needed to find Asha Maslin as quickly as they could because at this point, he was a potential threat to the rest of Holly's family. If Asha can so easily kill the girl that he claimed to love what's to stop him attempting to murder the rest of her family and so police feared that maybe Holly's parents and her sister were in danger whilst he was still on the loose and so the Gazard family were given an armed escort and they were taken out of the village 
just in case Asha intended to harm them as well. We needed to find out where Asha Maslin was. Um, so that became our prime uh, target, if you like, um, to find out where he was. We obviously had someone at large, potentially with a knife, so that was another concern of ours. It was reported that shortly after murdering Holly, Asha Maslin actually got into a taxi, and so police decided to track down the driver of this taxi. And the driver was actually really helpful in being able to locate Asha Maslin. After an eight hour manhunt, Asha Maslin was found at a friend's flat, and he was arrested on suspicion of the murder of Holly Gazard. And the knife that Asha used to murder Holly was found the following day discarded at building site near the salon. So obviously after he was arrested, Asher was being questioned and during his questioning, he was just not cooperating with police in the slightest. He was saying no comment to every single question he was asked and he just, he didn't seem to care. It didn't seem to police that he felt any remorse for what he had done. He was just, he was just kind of emotionless. Meanwhile, police were going over CCTV footage in Gloucester from the day that Holly was murdered and it provided police with even more evidence against Asher Maslin. In the hours before Holly's death, Asher is caught on CCTV in a cash converter shop where he sells a DVD player for £5. After this, he is then caught on CCTV footage again going into Wilkinson's and buying a 12-inch knife for £3. And he is then caught on CCTV just walking around Gloucester for a few hours whilst he is still carrying this knife before entering the salon at around quarter to six and murdering Holly. And this CCTV footage just shows that this murder was premeditated. He had planned this. Asher Maslin had a plan, like I said, he was going to go and get some money for this DVD player so that he could then buy a knife and then he was going to go and murder his ex, Holly Gazard. This murder wasn't a kind of spur of the moment decision. Like I said, this was premeditated. He knew what he was going to do that day. After he kills Holly, Asher is caught running down a street in Gloucester before he gets into a taxi and is then arrested hours later at the friend's flat. So obviously with all of this against Asher, police had more than enough evidence to be able to charge him for the murder of Holly Gazard. But despite all of the evidence against him, Asher was not admitting to anything and so a trial had to be set. In the first few court hearings, Asher Maslin actually refused to enter a plea. He wouldn't plead guilty and he wouldn't plead not guilty. He actually apparently wanted to be psychiatrically assessed before the trial, probably because if the assessment revealed revealed that something was wrong with Asher psychologically, it would mean that he would get less time. Asher was very clever with that. He knew that if he had a psychiatric assessment and it revealed that something was wrong with him, that he could get less time for this murder. He, he knew that. He was very clever with that. He, and eventually he was assessed. However, the results of this assessment revealed that psychiatrically there was nothing wrong with him. And so at his fourth court hearing, Asher Maslin pleaded guilty. And five months after the murder on the 16th of July 2014, 21-year-old Asher Maslin is sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum of 24 years for the murder of 20-year-old Holly Gazard. After Holly's murder, her family were determined to keep Holly's memory alive and so they set up a charity called the Holly Gazard Trust in her name. Because like I said at the start of the video, Holly was always such a fun, loving and positive person and so her family wanted something positive to come from her passing as well. The Holly Gazard Trust helps so many people in such different ways. The trust supports young people in the hair and beauty industry because that's what Holly was so interested in. The trust also gives educational talks in colleges about healthy relationships and domestic abuse. And it also funds workshops in schools to educate youngsters about knife crime and antisocial behaviour. The way that I certainly coped after it all happened was I didn't want Holly's name just to be forgotten. Um, because of the way that she was, how popular she was, I wanted to make something of her. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why we set up the Holly Gazard Trust. Holly's life was taken far too soon. Um, so we wanted to set something up in her name to keep her memory alive, keep her legacy going and do something that she would have done and she would have loved what we're doing. It, it would have been at her heart. With the trust, she will be even a, a bigger part of the family now going forward because we want to celebrate her life by helping others. Um, hopefully we can make a positive out of this negative and we can do a lot of good for other people 
uh, both in terms of education, getting them through their hairdressing exams, uh, and also hopefully preventing people going through domestic abuse as well. Honestly, the trust has just helped so many people and Holly's family have just achieved so much in her name. You can hold fundraising events and you can also donate to the trust. So if you guys are interested, I will leave a link to the Holly Gazard Trust website in the description of this video. I highly recommend that you go and check out the website because honestly, when I was reading it, I was just so amazed by the the work that they do is absolutely amazing and that is pretty much it for this video a huge thank you once again to megan for requesting this case like i said at the start of the video if you want to request a case go follow the link in the description of this video and tell me about a case and i might just cover it i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did give it a thumbs up and also subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you again very very soon for another mystery with molly bye guys